Paul Rosenblum is a bookkeeper, not an accountant or a CPA. Although the information comes from accounting professionals, the information in this podcast is meant to give you enough good information to have a conversation and dialogue with your tax professional about subjects discussed on this podcast. Welcome to episode four of the podcast series. Today, I want to talk about accrual versus cash-based accounting. There are two main methods of bookkeeping and tax accounting, according to GAAP, a.k.a. Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And I promise you, I'll try and follow the not boring part of the name of this podcast series. The first is called accrual accounting, which we'll get to in a little while after we talk about about the second kind, which is a cash-based accounting system. Cash-based bookkeeping and accounting is generally easier for the bookkeeper and the tax preparer because it's rather literal. That is, money that is received by selling a service or a product in a given calendar year is taxable income. And money that is paid by a company is a tax deduction as long as it's deemed a business expense and not a personal expense. The literal exception is that when you use a credit card for purchasing something for the business, the IRS considers that a cash transaction because the credit card company or the bank pays the store or the vendor on your behalf, usually within 24 hours or sooner. By the time you get the credit card statement, you're basically reimbursing the credit card company for money that they have already laid out and paid the credit card company on your behalf. Checks, Zelle, Venmo, PayPal, credit cards, and wire transfers, basically any way that you can pay an expense for your company is considered cash. Think of cash-based bookkeeping and accounting as paying for goods and services as you purchase them. You receive the goods, you pay for them. You receive the services, you pay for them. All at the same time, all in the same transaction. Like I mentioned, literal. For one example, if I were to go to a client's offices and do bookkeeping for the day, but before I leave, I'm handed a paper check, or I'm given a Zelle payment or a Venmo payment, Then when I get back to my office, I will email a sales receipt to my client, not a customer invoice. If I left the client's offices and I didn't get paid, then when I got back to my office, I would invoice my client so that I could get paid later. More about that in a few minutes. So cash-based accounting is counting money received as taxable income, and counting money spent as a tax deduction for the business. Basically, think of it as this, money in, money out, literal. Now let's talk about accrual-based accounting. If your company sells goods and services and then bills or invoices its clients or customers to pay later, then we consider that accrual-based. If you sell goods or provide a service today, invoice the customer and get paid tomorrow or next week or next month, then that's accrual bookkeeping. The IRS says that in an accrual basis, the income is earned immediately after you provide services or sell products, with some exceptions that we'll talk about later, even before you get paid. Therefore, even if you don't get paid by the end of that calendar year, that unpaid customer invoice is still considered earned revenue. In other words, taxable income. If the customer defaults and never pays you, then your company can write it off and the write-off transaction becomes a tax-deductible expense that year or in the next year. So no harm done, 
It's just more work to get there. On the other hand, if you have a utility bill come in on December 27th and you pay it on January 20th of the next year, in accrual accounting, that expense is tax deductible in the preceding year, when that bill came in and was entered into your accounting system, even though you haven't paid it until the subsequent year. Generally, service-based companies are in a cash basis, and manufacturing and restaurants, for some examples, are in the accrual basis. But exceptions to this unwritten rule can and do happen on a regular basis. If your company is on an accrual basis, and the company pays a November and a December utility bill, for one example, in January of the next year, then that figure can be accrued back to the preceding year so that the company can get a tax deduction in the year that the expense actually was just by entering a bill in the preceding year and paying it in the new year or making an accounting entry using an accrual adjustment entry for the payment if the bill isn't entered. As I said earlier, a lot more work in accrual accounting than cash-based accounting. However, for me, it's the most fun that I have all year in my accounting practice and my bookkeeping practice is moving taxable income from one year to another, knowing that it's 100% ethical and legal, and it follows the IRS and GAAP codes. If your taxes have been in a cash basis, you are allowed to change accounting methodology every five or six years or so. But when you do that, it could be a flag for the IRS and the possibility of an audit could tick up a notch. So as I always say in this podcast, please have this conversation with your accountant or CPA or tax preparer to see what methodology is best for you and your company at the very beginning And five or six or seven years later, you can revisit it. And if you really have a a valid reason to change the methodology, then you can. And also make sure that your bookkeeper knows the difference between accrual and cash-based bookkeeping so that your books will be in good shape, even if there is a change. And believe me, a lot of bookkeepers these days out there don't know the difference between accrual accounting and taxes and cash-based accounting and taxes. There are several ways to do bookkeeping for accrual-based companies. The bookkeeper doesn't necessarily have to enter every single bill and bill payment. He or she can just enter all of the bills that were unpaid as of December 31st of that current year, so that they would be counted as deductions. As the open bills are paid in January or February, the payments would then be attached to the open bills dated the previous year, so that these bills will now be shown as paid. Or one adjusting accounting entry that either the bookkeeper or the accountant can make to attach to several different expense categories, all going to the accounts payable category for the previous year. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of a monkey wrench into this equation by talking about shipping products. If you ship items from a store or your website on December 15th, and the goods don't get to their destination by December 31st, and you can prove that, then in accrual accounting, the IRS says that since the items aren't received at their destination, you haven't actually earned that money. Therefore, even in accrual accounting, the invoice that you have dated for December could either be changed to reflect the date in January of the next year, or your bookkeeper or tax preparer can make what we call an accrual entry in the books 
to reflect that value of the invoice in December and move it to January so it counts as income for the subsequent year. Therefore, since the shipment hasn't reached its destination by December 31st, it's not considered taxable income since you didn't actually technically make the sale yet, even if the customer prepays you before you ship it out. Just because a customer prepays for something, it doesn't necessarily mean that monies received is counted as taxable income. If the shipment is lost and never gets to the recipient, for one example, and you can't replace it because it's unique, then you would have to refund that money. Therefore, in that case, the customer payment or prepayment is technically a liability of your company until you can prove that is actually earned income that is taxable. Sales taxes in most states work in a similar way. If you invoice a customer in December and the customer doesn't pay until January, even if you are in a cash basis, most states want you to pay the sales tax even before your customer or client pays you. If they default and they never pay you, you can then turn around and get a credit from your county or state sales tax agency. And now for our weekly feature, our client story of the week. I have been consulting with a client for the last 17 years after I initially set up the books for her company, and I've seen it grow to a multi-million dollar corporation. They have always been on accrual bookkeeping and accrual accounting. They ship goods mainly out of the U.S. with some domestic sales and shipments. In December of every year, there are always 20 to 30 invoices that are anywhere between 100000 and 250000 in total, all for goods shipped out of the country and going through customs. It was determined after we researched it that it takes 35 to 37 days to get to its destination. And for years, the client was very happy that the company had a great December. The accountant and I used to joke with her every at the end of the year or the beginning of the next year by saying that, hey, in December, you went on vacation, you closed shop, you didn't make any money. And she said, no, 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 I was here. I was running around. I was here. And we tried to explain to her that the point is that all of these invoices created in December were all in the shipping process. They were not received yet at its destination. Therefore, we would make entries later so that the value of the invoices showed up in the middle to late January after the items were received by her customers or clients. Then they were considered taxable sales. The owner of the company never really understood that concept, but there it was. She was able to postpone paying taxes on those sales until they were technically IRS approved taxable revenue. The moral here, try to be on a cash basis. It's easier, less headaches and less cost for your accounting and bookkeeping. There are, however, some real pros on being on accrual since you can legally and ethically move income from one year to another and move expenses from one year to another. If you're on an accrual tax basis and you pay a utility bill in January actually for the December usage, then the bookkeeper doesn't even have to enter an unpaid bill in your system for the previous year. They can just enter the payment in January and either a bookkeeper or your tax preparer or your accountant can make an accrual adjustment entry moving the value of that January payment back into December since it really is an expense for the December usage of that particular utility. 
I don't expect small business owners to be bookkeepers or accountants, but I do really think it's important for business owners to at least understand the general concepts. It's your business and you should have at least enough knowledge of the accounting to make informed decisions on how you want to run your business and account for your business within your tax structure. And also it really helps reading profit and loss reports and balance sheet reports. Many bookkeepers, by the way, don't know the difference between accrual and cash-based accounting. So make sure that when you hire a bookkeeper, that should be a question for them during the interview to make sure that they understand the concept and if, if they have other clients on an accrual basis as well as other clients on a cash basis. There are always many questions on this when I do webinars or in-person classes on this subject. So as always, please email your questions and comments to either bookkeepermensch at gmail.com or numerex at numerex online. That's N-U-M-E-R-E-X at numerex online.com. And I will answer them. I will answer the email but I will answer them in upcoming podcast episodes. Again, as always, thanks for listening. And until next time, I'm Paul Rosenblum.